the image. So the, um, I will try to be short. Basically, um, the purpose of the scan is to demonstrate um, the findings, the normal findings of um, the posterior fossa, cerebellum, and uh, to also show uh, something about the spine. So I have here a, um, a pregnancy at around 22, 23 weeks, right? Um, and we have um, plenty of fluid around the baby. So the baby was moving a lot. We may, um, but I think we will, we have very good conditions to, uh, to show this. So I will uh, just um, do some readjustment with the system and um, um, okay, and maybe, so I like, uh, I like to scan in this sepia mode. I hope you don't mind, but um, let's start with the posterior fossa. Uh, I was at your session yesterday, Gustavo, and you have shown basically everything, but I, I will just, you know, go again through the normal findings. So um, the, uh, the view for the routine ultrasound regarding the cerebellum um, will basically be this one. Go back, take the screen. I just make it a bit smaller so that we can have a better picture. Um, so you see the baby is moving, so I have to, to readjust all the time, but just want to show you um, the cerebellum, the vermis, hopefully in the sagittal scan in a moment, but just first the cisterna magna, okay? with, um, let's try to get a better picture here. First, for the biometry, I will always try to obtain a, the largest diameter of the cerebellum with both the carvum septi pellucidi in the front and then the cerebellum and probably, you know, do my measurement at this level. Now, what confused many practitioners is the small structure we see in the, um, in the cisterna magna. So I will, I will just make it a little bigger. So we have basically two compartments here. One will be the fluid in the axial compartment and the cerebrospinal fluid over here. And normally, the cystic structure in the middle should fenestrate and should become smaller. And it's basically the black, the, the so-called black pouch that can um, in some cases persist and cause the black pouch persistent with the changes at the area of the vermis. Let's have a closer look over here to try to see the area of the fourth ventricle, which is here. This is the fourth ventricle. And we have the pedonculi over here. And again, the vermis and the cerebe cerebellum hemispheres. So symmetric and the measurement will be probably done from here to, to this, to here, okay? The second measurement that can be done in this area will be from this hyperechogenic area and to try to obtain the measurement of the cisterna magna. 10 millimeter will be the cutoff, um, uh, you know, above 10 millimeter is abnormal and below Two millimeter is also abnormal. You should see some fluid here. If there is no fluid at 22 weeks, 23 weeks, you have to suspect um, an uh, open um, uh, spina bifida or maybe an occipital encephalocele if the spine is absolutely normal. Um, I will try. I will try now to move before, or maybe try to show the sagittal views because the. Vermis is appreciated in a sagittal view. I will have to push probably the baby a little bit, okay, to change its position and to try to go. Okay, so. Okay, and then. You know what, what I want to do? I just want to be able to scan through the, through the fontanelle, and basically I would prefer to go through the posterior fontanelle, but let's see if we can succeed. If not, we will just go to the spine and try it later. So we can. Okay, 
the baby eats. Okay. There. One try more, otherwise I will do the spine. No, it's difficult here. Let's, let's do the fetal spine and then come back maybe to the surgical view, okay? Let's smaller the picture a little bit, make it a bit larger, okay? And maybe here. Okay, you see it's not always easy. I'm using both hands here. moving a lot, but I think I just want to show you the area here. Maybe if you can, okay. if you can f freeze for me, please. Thank you. Okay. It's not a perfect view. I would prefer to take really this view in a 3D with the 3D multiplanar mode under better, uh, let's say, conditions. But what we can see here, just make the picture a little bit bigger, okay? and move it to the right uh, place with the, with the pen, okay? Here, here, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then move it a bit higher, okay. So what we can see here is the, um, the brain stem, okay, with the pons and the area of the vermis. And there is a, there is a very nice publication from a group of friends who, um, who uh, measured the vermis in this, in this dimension here they measured the brainstem from here to here, and the, um, the uh, quotient will be 1.5, true gestation. So the vermis should be a little bit larger than the brainstem. We, have, we don't have a perfect sagittal view here, but let's see. Okay, it, let's make it a bit smaller to not lose. So I think I will go to the spine now, and um, the, uh, the, um, the, the spine, I will, you tell me if we have the time, maybe to use 2D first and then to use the 3D technique to, you know, to, to try to, um, to look at it. So let's start with 2D, okay? And um, we will try to visualize the conus medullaris and um, the normal spine. So the, I told you this baby is moving a lot, so I have to follow every time, but Let's go to the area of the conus medullaris here, and then back. I have to use the cine loop. So we have here the conus, conus medullaris, and if you look inside, you can see a white line over here. This is the central canal, the conus medullaris, and you know, the, what we should do, especially in an obese patient with maybe diabetic, is to try to rule out any defects or caudal regression syndrome and to try to relate the end of the conus medullaris to the um, uh, vertebral bodies. And there are several techniques to do it. You have shown us yesterday two, and you, I, th I think you believe about, the, or you think the direction is very important. So what I usually do at 22, 23 weeks, I try to relate it to the kidneys knowing that the kidneys can have different positions, but it should be almost at the level of the kidney or at the upper pole of the kidney at 22 to 23 weeks. So let's go down with the focus zone, make it a bit bigger, okay? So, and then you can see conus medullaris here, okay? Movement to the side, kidney over here, and then again, conus medullaris, at the level, it's probably a little bit too bright, the picture now, but again here, kidney, and then conus medullaris, and again kidney. Um, maybe we can take a 3D of the kidney, uh, sorry, a 3D of the spine with a conventional probe, a conventional 3D, and try to look at the vertebral bodies, and then if the baby is moving, um, we are changing the probe, yeah. If the baby is moving too much, I will change to the um, X matrix technology. So we will try first with this one. Okay, no, it's okay. I will increase the depth. And you see, 
So it's not me moving, it's the baby moving. But um, let's take a 3D here, okay? And take a bigger screen. So if you want to look at the bone, really, you need to, to have a small region of interest. So let's take it from here, okay? One, two, and three. Don't worry, I yeah. One, two, and three. No, it's 3D. I wanted to 3D, static. Again, 3D, static, okay. So one, try again. One, two, and three. Baby is moving, okay. You see a lot of movement. <laughs> so it's not, we have, we have another technology. So I will, I will try the X matrix transducer, which you know, is known to acquire volume in a snapshot. And we will try this one. Okay, fetal spine, okay, now again. Fetus is moving, 3D, static 3D, thank you, okay. And then just, we will take a bigger transducer here, like this, a bigger region of interest, okay. And then take now the 3D. One, yeah, yeah, this, okay. And um, to the render mode, so we will change to the, to the uh, spine render mode. It's the second one. See, see rendering. No, no, it's not threshold, sorry. It's here. Go back. Render mode. We are not finding it, but anyway. So 3D again, please. Okay. So you see with an electronic probe, how fast is the acquisition? Let me take it again. Okay. Acquisition, we make it smaller here. Okay. And then we need the, we need the, sorry? Yeah, skeletal, yeah. So uh, we have it here. Surface and skeletal over here. So we have the picture over here. And so I need, I think, probably to take another one. But it's just to show you that we can see the ribs. We can see the posterior vertebral bodies. And we can navigate within the spine to be able to see the anterior vertebral bodies. I'm just going inside, okay? And then we can see the anterior one. The image was acquired very rapidly, so this is, I think, an advantage of this new X matrix. So now the baby is quiet, okay, is quieter. Now I can increase the, increase the resolution of the 3D, okay? Go back to 3D again. And now I will take it, you know, take a bit more resolution. Okay, still very rapid. And we can, we have the spine, so I can increase the, the angle. And we have now the spine within the, the 3D volume over here. And we can look at it and so on. So if you don't mind, Gustavo, I would like to go back to the brain and try to take really the, the vermis and the, the, uh, the, the vermis and the brain stem. One more try and then I think uh, if I don't succeed, we can stop. So I go to my setting, exactly. Okay, picture a little bit brighter. So just move a little bit the baby. And And a little bit bigger. OK. So again, you see it's not always easy. And because I think I will, now if you can stop. OK. So because I think I will, you know, to be sure, to be more confident, I will use for this kind of exam, I will always use the 3D multiplanar mode if there is a problem with the vermis so we can 
we can increase the size, and the question is, how can we be sure if the vermis is intact, if the lower part is not hypoplastic? But what we can see here is, uh, I think, a nice, normal vermis, no communication between the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna, and if we, if we go a little bit back, I think this will be the sagittal view with the corpus callosum in the front, the quadrogeminal plate here, and it's not a very nice view of, of, the, um, of the brain stem, so I, we will probably need some 3D, but I think I will stop at this uh, uh, stage. If you don't mind. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, we have time for one question. Dario, be ready, Karim. Yeah, please. Hi, Karim, Dario speaking. Hello, Dario. Uh, I was just wondering, when you were scanning at the beginning of your de nice demo uh, from the actual plane, okay. when the baby was not moving so much, why didn't you acquire a volume from the actual plane and then use the reconstruction of the mesagital view to show the vermis? Yeah, very, very good question. Um, I think, I think um, when, you, when you do this, when you, when you do the acquisition in the axial plane, um, you can look at the vermis, but very frequently, the lower part of it, so probably um, you, would, you would go for the 3D from here, just take the 3D static here, the highest, we can take the highest resolution, and then try to manip manipulate, make it a bit brighter here. So I'm taking a 3D static mechanical with the highest resolution and then try to manipulate in this, um, with the multiplanar mode. But I think I feel less confident when you come to, to appreciate the lower part of the vermis because it's frequently in the shadow. And um, if you go to the multiplanar mode, can you activate multiplanar mode? So I, I no, no, multiplanar without the, the volume. I will try to, yeah, exactly. So zoom, okay. And then if, so this is what you wanted me to do probably, no? the, Dario, or something like this. So, and then go to the, this one, and to try, you know, we have, the, we have now the reconstructed um, sagittal plane but I think the quality is not the same as if you take it through the fontanelle in a sagittal view. So I feel more confident with the other technique than this one. Okay, just Thank wondering whether using multi uh, thicker slice view uh, would increase the, the resolution. Yeah. Um, if you have the chance to. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we stop here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I th yeah, I'm always afraid if the lower part is missing, whether it's due to a shadowing or it's, you know, it's due to the acquisition technique or it's really missing. So I prefer, if there is a problem, to look at it in a sagittal view. Okay. Thank you very much, Karim. Thank you.